subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel about the iphone and samsung in the camera area which one should you buy this year when it comes to their cameras now we have the note 9 that recently was launched it will be on the channel within a few days actually should be around here this week the samsung galaxy s9 plus launched earlier this year and apple is coming out with their new phones and not too shortly i don't think we're going to see massive massive changes to the camera this year for apple but of course every year they slightly improve their cameras okay so the first aspect of the camera i want to discuss is the design of the camera now most of your iphones are going to have vertical cameras this year just like the one here on the iphone 10 the cheaper model is probably going to have just a single lens but when you're deciding to buy samsung or apple in 2018 check it out right here you do have rather of a large bump here on the rear of this device so you know while it is a very high quality material on that glass for the camera it does make you feel a little bit cautious about resting it on a table or just dropping it on a table you can definitely feel that camera hitting the table so uh, the iphones to me definitely need a case a little bit more when it comes to you know having that camera exposed on the rear due to its design even the 8 plus has a camera bump right there now over here for the samsung device it's definitely a lot flatter now these are still glass phones so i still think they need cases but still it's a very flat camera design here on the samsung so you're not necessarily hitting that bump every time you put it on the table so i give kudos to samsung here for having just a flatter camera design element on the rear of their devices so when you're deciding to buy these in terms of camera design think about the material on the back how it sticks off the phone you're a little bit more prone to you know crack the camera lens if you drop the iphone on the rear just due to it sticking off and protruding off the device itself okay so what type of cameras are you typically going to get with a flagship samsung or apple phone in 2018 well on the apple side you get dual cameras on pretty much every iphone that you pay 800 plus dollars for with a telephoto lens as well as a single lens and all these manufacturers have basically gone down to the 12 megapixel count as it doesn't really matter about having the largest pixels anymore it's more about the sensor and the way your software process these these images to give you a better overall photo so telephoto lenses come on all of these devices that you see right here iphone 8 plus with a telephoto lens as well and over here for the note 8 you also have this ability to you know just go out with an optical zoom on the zoom and over here for the galaxy s9 plus similar affairs so basically this is what you're working with a single lens and a telephoto all being 12 megapixel cameras so those are the camera types you're going to get when you decide to buy them so they're not really a big difference there so let's move on to the camera software between the two now the first thing i want to mention is the thing i always point out that i don't like about the iphone and that is that you have to go into the settings to change some of the camera settings so let's go down here and find the camera and here we go we have our record video settings here we have our record slow-mo and we have our formats down here now this is extremely inefficient if you're trying to change things on the fly you have your phone on a tripod or even if you're trying to catch a quick moment you forgot your phone was in 4k you have to go put it back in 1080 because you're trying to save some space this can be annoying for the iphone so that's the first thing i want to point out there now on the samsung device we do have all of those settings built right into the camera section although it's not you know the easiest to find everything because there's just so much going on here in the samsung device it's still right there so you definitely have an easier software experience when it comes to changing settings on the fly but when it comes to the camera ui itself let's take a look at what we're working with here so we have photo portrait we know the deal here with iphone and you just go over to the left and you get time lapse slow-mo video now up at the top we have live photos we have a timer or have we have our filters effect and we have hdr and flash so i think the iphone has a very simple to use camera interface when you pull it out and you just take a photo for example let me pull in this apple watch really quickly here that apple watch is rather far away we just click that 1x button it'll go 2x optical we'll tap the focus right there boom we can also hold down 
on the focus to lock that focus right there we can change the brightness here so overall very simple to use camera interface my only problem with it is that they have all those settings all the way in settings so you have to go back into settings to change things that's my only gripe with the iphone camera software now heading over to the samsung software here if we go into let me just use the s9 because the s9 is more of what we're going to be working with with the future of samsung devices you can see that you have auto mode live focus pro mode panorama food now the thing about samsung's software is that pretty much every year it seems like the camera software changes up a little so it's not as consistent feeling as you know the apple device so over here for the samsung let's go into the camera you can see they're just a little bit different and i think that that lack of consistency makes you kind of have to relearn software every time you get on a newer samsung device such as this one right here and also i found that the samsung device is a little more um, twitchy or not twitchy but a little more sensitive is a better word for it sometimes you'll just swipe over on accident to click the camera but when you do get in the mode you want it's very simple affair you just go ahead and tap the focus just like so and the 2x button is over here to the left or the right excuse me down here and you just click that and you can go in and out here and just snap your photo for the samsung down at the bottom you do have your ability to stretch this to a full screen flash filters front camera and your settings icon which i do appreciate right there in settings there's a ton of things you can do we're not going to cover them all here with the samsung device but one thing i do want to mention about the cameras here is that it seems like apple gives you a little bit more 4k flexibility so if you're into the 4k video recording you have 24 30 60 and you you can record basically for as long as you want there for the iphone now over here on the galaxy device if we go into the settings and we scroll down into the video size you can see you have uhd at 60 but you don't have the 24 also it will cut you off at 10 minutes so for video people i think the iphone will be the better choice for you and the camera department if you're thinking about buying apple or samsung in 2018 however due to the ability to have dual pixel af on the samsung device snapping photos i find on the galaxy series has definitely been quicker than the iphone the photos actually shoot faster for me for the samsung device one thing i found is that the apple camera app seems to open quicker here at least on ios 12 than the samsung device so three two one and you can see just a little faster for the iphone open that camera it just it's just a little bit quicker so i mean it's like milliseconds so it's probably not a big deal that dual pixel af might make up for it but faster focus here for me on the samsung but a faster camera opening time for the iphone now a couple things i want to point out about the iphone or samsung when you're buying one in 2018 is social media uh, it just seems like there's a favoritism going on for the iPhone because Instagram videos and photos typically turn out clearer on the iPhone than they do for a Samsung or pretty much any Android for that matter. So if you ever took an Android, put it side by side with an iPhone, did some video, you're going to notice that there's a little bit of a blur going on with the Android device. You kind of got to take the photo outside of the Instagram app, put it in Instagram, and then you're ready to go. And I've heard similar stories. I'm not a huge Snapchat user, but I've heard similar stories with iOS having a better Snapchat camera than the, you know, Android device. So social media in 2018 is still, you know, favored on the iPhone when it comes to just having a better camera in those applications developed just work harder on the ios apps and they seem to go first to the app store and we all know why that is mucho dinero you get a lot of money when you go on the apple site because there's more of a user base but at the same time don't forget that most of the world is still rocking on the android device but here on the android device you can easily still do social media no problem but if you use the actual app camera a lot of times, even on the S9 having a better camera than many iPhones, it still doesn't you know, perform quite as well all the time as the iPhone. And typically, it's not in photos, it's mostly in video, but even in photos, sometimes you will have a slight blur in comparison to the iPhone. This, this is probably the way they process it or whatever, but yes, that's one thing I had to definitely point out. If you're buying one of these in 2018, you're a big social media user, you're gonna like the iPhone better for the quality you get out of those cameras. One thing I wanna mention that the iPhone doesn't give you in comparison right out of the box you can get this feature maybe in some third-party apps but third-party apps is not what we're 
we're talking about here the picture sizes and different aspect ratios yes you do have the one by one which is the square mode on the iphone but look at all the rest of these different sizes of photos you can take it's just much more flexible here for the samsung galaxy s9 plus and the galaxy note 8 note 9 all these samsung devices it's much more flexible when it comes to the picture size aspect ratio you can get out of your phone so on the whole, it seems like the Apple camera is just simpler to use and has a better optimized camera for social media, but the Samsung camera is the more, I would say, sharper photo taker. If you you know know what you're doing in pro mode, you can get even better photos, but I find photos to come out better for the Samsung in my experience. They're more vibrant. They have more detail than the iPhone, but video wins for the iPhone due to just being able to record longer. It's a little bit more consistent, and I've actually used the iPhone many times for some B row on this channel i just found it to be a better experience when it comes to video but the faster focus gives the samsung the better photo taking abilities in my experience now one thing i want to talk about before we get on to the photo samples that i took both day and night of both of these devices is but if you have the time to manage your photos google photos can work as well but there is no way to expand the storage via a micro sd card and there never will be likely for an iphone now over here on the galaxy you do have pretty good sized storages uh uh, they gave you 64 gigs mostly on all galaxies. Now the S9 can be bought in up to 256 gigs. The new Note 9 that's coming here is going to have 512 gigs. You can put up to another 512 gigs on a micro SD card expandable. So you can get a ton of storage for photos and you can just swap these SD cards out when you're done taking your photos. So the edge is clearly to Samsung when it comes to the way you store your photos for at least people that want to transfer files like, you know, to their computer from their phone, this is gonna be the better option. If you're a mobile first person and you never wanna deal with extra stuff off the phone, then Apple's still the way to go. But then again, you could say, no, it's not because Google Photos works a little bit better on an Android device and typically you can get it right out of the gate. It's usually installed already on my Samsung phones right when I get them. So Google Photos syncs very easily here on any Android device. So I think Samsung's got the edge when it comes to the way you store the photos on your device. It's actually a little bit easier to manage too you got a full-blown file system on here as well so very easy to manage stuff on the samsung it's more like a real computer versus more of a cloud-based mobile storage solution for the iphone series so i basically covered a ton about the cameras but one thing i missed out and a lot of people ask me why do you not cover the front camera that much in your videos nick and that's because i don't find that they're really innovating much on the front i feel like they just blow off the front camera and give you this weaker seven megapixel on samsung this weaker eight megapixel camera on the front now don't get me wrong these photos are definitely usable for memories they're not horrible cameras on the front but they seem to give me, be giving the front camera the middle finger in comparison to the rear camera. The front cameras don't shoot in high quality video. The photos are much less detailed than the rear. And a lot of times they produce softer images, more blown out exposures. So if they want to, you know, innovate on their phones, one area I feel like both Apple and Samsung need to pay attention to is putting a high quality camera like you put on the rear on the front of your device. I don't think anybody would complain about having a fantastic front camera for those group photos when they're out with a bunch of friends and they don't want to look at the back of their phone and then check to see if it worked out and things like that now your s pen solution with the little button to click it from far is fine and all but i would rather have an easy to hold in my hand front camera that shoots fantastic photo and video here for the device these though samsung and apple they definitely put all their research and you know development into the rear camera and just throw maybe an older flagship style camera on the front like like these front cameras on these phones are probably as good as the rear camera on an iphone 5 or 5s for example okay so i've arrived at my final conclusion now here is where i'm going to give you my personal feelings i talked about a lot of more facts about these phones that pretty much everybody's going to notice but here i'm just going to tell you my raw opinion on these now for photos this year i would choose the samsung device you're going to get a more vibrant photo a faster autofocus, and the ability to tweak in pro mode if it doesn't suffice to your liking the variable aperture camera will change in different lighting scenarios to give you more detail at nighttime so photo takers get a samsung this year i think you're going to be happier you have expandable storage and higher capacity storage options than ever before 
on a Samsung device. They're just the better photo takers to me. Now, if you're a video taker, the iPhone is the way to go. Video on Instagram, video in general records longer. It doesn't get quite as hot in my experience and it also you know, just has a better overall quality when it comes to shooting video for the iPhone. So look at that smooth video you're gonna get there on the iOS device. It seems to stay balanced. Just a very nice video experience overall. So if you're picking the iPhone, I think you should definitely focus on, you know, how good the video quality is. So being that I'm a YouTube video creator, I would pick the iPhone at the end of the day because it takes good enough photos with fantastic video quality, but that's my needs. You know, I take video a lot. You might not be taking more than one video per month. You might snap a lot of photos on your device, and if you're that person, the iPhone might not be the better option as you're gonna get pretty vibrant, beautiful, crispy, detailed photos for the Samsung device here with super fast dual pixel AF and great aspect ratios for getting that perfect size photo you need for pretty much any occasion. So that's it. That wraps up our three part series of should you buy Apple or Samsung in 2018. Today, we discussed the camera, but hold on, there's more. The iPhone 8 Plus and the Note 8 took them out for a daytime sample photo comparison it was so much fun. Then I took out the better night cameras here, the iPhone 10 and the Galaxy S9 Plus for the night samples. Enjoy the rest of this video. And before you leave, go ahead and click the like button for me. Share this with somebody you think is having trouble with Samsung or Apple this year. And uh, comment if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching. It is greatly appreciated. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Be sure to be well and enjoy. length away here is the iPhone 8 plus from the front you're probably noticing the audio is not quite as loud for the Apple iPhone 8 plus so it looks like the angle is a little bit wider for the front-facing video which I do like here on the 8 plus but overall you know again most iPhones look very similar from the front and this is what you're gonna get this being the iPhone 8 plus okay so here's some front-facing video from the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 and you can see that it's basically what you're gonna get now most Samsung phones look very similar from the front I'm talking specifically about the flagship phones the Galaxy S8 the S8 Plus the Note 8 maybe the Note 9 a little bit better but this is essentially the kind of video quality and audio that comes out of most Samsung phones this being the Note 8 sample video of the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 while I am walking you can see I don't have a tripod so stabilization is pretty good overall I'm gonna pan a little bit here so you can kind of see how it does with moving through different lighting scenarios and it looks pretty good overall. Let's go ahead and switch over to the iPhone and see how that camera performs here. All right, so here is the iPhone 8 Plus and both of these were shot in 4K 30 if you were wondering and this is basically what you get here. I find that the iPhone 8 Plus is video to be a little bit more natural panning around you can see overall a little bit more natural. Maybe the shadows are a little bit more brought out on the iPhone, but you can go ahead and see between these two kind of the differences between a Samsung and an Apple phone.
All right guys, so I'm out here on the Galaxy S9 Plus shooting a quick sample video. This is the front facing quality you're gonna get in pretty low light. So you can judge the quality of that front facing camera right here. Let's go ahead and switch it over and see what the iPhone 10 looks like. All right guys, so here is some testing from the iPhone 10 on the front facing camera. You can get an idea in low light what this one does perform light in comparison to the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, Samsung versus Apple camera. Alright guys, so here is the iPhone 10 at night. This is the kind of audio quality and video quality you're going to get from this device at nighttime. Go ahead and judge this quality for yourself.